Hi, friends. Smash that subscribe button. Leave a like, leave a comment. Tell us what you think. Benny, where can they find us on social media? You can find us uh, Ray Benny Sports. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, your favorite TikTok, and of course, Reddit. Check us out. Join the conversation there. And don't forget, subscribe, follow on your favorite podcast provider and leave us a review. Bomber fans, CFL fans, we're going into week three and we're going to start off with the battle of two NOs happening at IG Field on Thursday night football. Uh, we got some, well, not grades, I was about to say grades. We did that last yeah. time. We got some big questions that each team is going to go through into week three and we got quick and dirty predictions. But let's start off with the Bombers and Lions matchup uh, and we're going to go position by position and see who gets a check mark by each one. Let's go start with QBs. You can go ahead and start first. You're right. Right now, I got to go with again with Zach Laros. The guy has been so far superb so far this season. Uh, highest graded player. PFF is now doing grades for the CFL. So uh, Zach Laros has been their highest graded player um, again after last week. So he's he's nine and two in his career against BC. You know, four and zero with the Bombers. Um, he's just been stellar so far this year. Until until I see otherwise, uh, I'll have to go with Laros. Adams has played well. I'll give him credit but he hasn't had a full game of playing well. So we'll see what he can do against his bomber D. Yeah. I don't see how anyone could pick uh, uh, Vernon. I was against Zach Caleros on this one. Uh, Zach Caleros is already in MOP form. Um, doesn't make many mistakes. Vernon Adams still makes those mistakes. So I'm going to take Caleros as a QB in this matchup. Absolutely. Another horrific pick. They're lucky they got that ball back against Edmonton, but threw it high up in the air into double coverage, more than double coverage. I think it was, uh, oh goodness. They should have scored more touchdowns as well against Edmonton. Same and same again, same as against Calgary, right? They started off hot against Calgary and kind of fizzled in the second half. Yeah. So it's all dependent on the quarterback. Yeah. He's so growing. He, he's been yeah. he's better than he was last year, right? And Absolutely. even the last couple, like even when he was in BC. So where, where were the these guys last year? Was they were they also in the third week that they played? They're both undefeated, BC and Winnipeg. Was it week three? It feels like it was early. But maybe it wasn't week three, but it felt like there was that heavyweight matchup early in the season kind of thing because Nathan I Rourke think... was going crazy. And then all of a sudden the Bombers just dumped them, right? So, yeah, was that in like a week six or seven, though? Was it that late? Oh, well, maybe. Oh, we'll have to look into the arc. Yeah. Let's move check on that to... out. Darn research. <laughs> Let's move on to running backs uh, in the running back matchup. Just be not just because Oliveira. Mm-hmm. We don't know yet. Uh, not in 100% condition. So I'm going to go with Mizell. He's still a new running back as well as a starting role, but he's putting up some good numbers, averaging about six per carry. So I'm going to go with Mizell and BC on this one. I got to agree on that just because Oliveira is not 100%. We don't even know if he's going to play. Chances are he's not. Uh, Johnny Augustine looked good finishing off that game against Saskatchewan, but now he's going to be relied on for a full game. Can he do it? We'll, we'll find out. But yeah, Mizell gets the edge this week. Now, you know, I'm excited to see Johnny Augustine because when he was hitting free agency or close to hitting free agency a couple of years ago, I was like, he's a priority. And yeah. they signed him and the, and the carries didn't come with that signing that I thought would come. So I'm very excited to see what Augustine could do. And I'm still a believer in Johnny Augustine. So, uh, but until proven, I'll take Mizell in this matchup. Yeah, exactly. Receivers, who do you got? I'm, I'm going to have to side with Winnipeg, especially with uh, Dominic Rhymes out for BC. Uh, Lucky Whitehead's coming back in for BC, but we don't know what kind of condition it is, if he's perfectly healthy or not. So either way, I got to go with Winnipeg. Dalton showing. I mean, the guy is, leads the league in yards, 205 yards, uh, targets as well. He was tied with Dominic Rhymes. So he's just picking up where he left off last year. Plus, you got Dembski, Bailey, all that. So I'm going to pick Winnipeg. Yeah, because of the depth, I can't go against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. There's too many weapons. I know the BC secondary has looked decent against Calgary and very good against Edmonton, a very well, questionable Edmonton team. But uh, yeah, I just because of depth. And they got Katoy, a good guy who can take the top off of any defense, just like Whitehead. Uh, but we'll see what they can do. And they got Hollins, still good receiver. Oh, yeah. They are good receivers. Like if you just... threw Dominic Rhymes in there with say Kenny Lawler out it's it's fairly comparable kind of thing you know yeah you throw Lawler in there then it's then it's bombers for sure but that's yeah, a good yeah. unit in BC so it won't be easy depth wins depth wins uh offensive line uh, I'll give it to the bombers with a slight edge on this BC's only given up one sack compared to bombers giving up uh sorry BC bombers giving up two two yeah uh Winnipeg is averaging 130 yards to BC's 121 so they get a small check mark. It's very close. I was really tempted to push this one, but uh, no ties allowed. So I'm going to go with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Yeah, I'll agree with you on that. Slight edge to the Bomber O-line. Uh, that continuity, again, is working out well for them. Um, 
you know, the, the line, again, according to PFF, this line has been stellar for two games uh, and highest ranking grading O-line over the two games. So you, you can't uh, can't bet against them right now until you see otherwise. So I'll go with the Bomber O-line. How about D-line? This is where I kind of get into to a tough mode because BC's defense has played well, but with a caveat, they've only played Calgary's D with Jake Martin was still struggling Edmonton with Cornelius. So it's hard to say really where they're at. We're going to find out for sure tomorrow with this bomber offense. Um, I'm, mm, I'm, I'm going to give it to BC with just with Jeff Goat out. Um, Matthew Betts has looked good so far for BC's got a couple sacks, but he's been in the quarterback's face quite a bit. So um, I like what Christian, uh, sorry, Stellis and Habe is doing and Willie Jefferson have been stellar or pretty good so far too. I've, I've been using stellar a lot tonight. Um, no doubt. I'll, <laughs> I'll give the edge to BC. Yeah. BC gets a slight edge on this one. Just as all the, uh, all the, the uh, examples that you said already, Ma- Matthew, uh, what's his name? You just mentioned Betts. him. Betts. Betts. Thank you. Good Canadian player. He got, I think he got a shot with Jacksonville this past oh, uh, off season. Oh, uh, wow. So he's, yeah, he's, he's, He's in line to be the best Canadian defensive player in the league, if not best defensive player. Uh, but Jeff Coat is out. Uh, and you know what? One more game like uh, Habba played last game, and I'd say this might be even close to a push. But just because uh, we don't know if Habba can uh, he can play, but we'll see. I'll, I'll still give it to the BC Lions on this one. Yeah, he's still a rookie, still fresh, still new, still learning things out there. So, Linebackers, who you got on linebackers? Uh you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one to the Bombers. Um, like again, I could almost go to a push on this one. Uh, Lock Ombo is is played well for BC so far this season. Uh, Big Hill has also played well, and I'll, I'll give the edge just because Malik Clemens there so far for the Bombers is, uh, you know, has chipped in a sack, forced fumble. Um, Big Hill looked dangerous last week. You know he's gonna come back strong after missing a couple opportunities for sacks and defense not playing as strong as they could have last week against Saskatchewan. So. Edge to uh, the bomber linebackers. And they got Darby as well, who's a great yeah. player. And that's not taking away from the combo. He's a tackling machine. Dude's one of the best in the in the league. But Malik Clemens is just making plays all over the field, like his teammates and his coaches have said this uh, this past week. So bombers have the edge in linebackers. Defensive backs. Hmm. I'll give it to the lines here. Uh, I know they played the Elks last week, but whenever you can hold a team to under 100 yards uh, in the air, that's pretty prime. Uh, I, I know the Elks are brutal, but and zero points in a passing league. Yeah. And Bombers are missing Demario Houston. Uh, the Lions have the advantage in this one. So I'm going to go Lions secondary. Yeah, I'll have to give the edge to, to the Lions as well, just because of Houston being out and how much yards the Bombers gave up last week as, as a D. I'm not just blaming these guys, but Desmond Lawrence didn't look great. I mean, we talked about it, but Harris had a lot of time sometimes to look for his guys. Uh, and what is it? Abu Darami Sawari. I don't want to say that yes. wrong. I probably did. Is making his first start, you know, in the CFL. So it'll be a bit of a learning curve for him. So we'll see what happens uh, out there. But right now, with these injuries, I'll give it to BC. How about special teams? I, I got to give it to Winnipeg on this. Uh, Castillo is ahead of Sean White right now in the field goal department. So far, 100%. Sean White was 85, I think. Uh, Janarian Grant, you know, bounced back last week. And also, he had two at least returns against uh, BC last year, you know. And, and Jamison mm-hmm. Cheyenne, that guy has been booming these punts, almost at a fifty average. So I give yeah. the Bombers edge on the special teams. Yeah, I give them the edge because of Janarian Grant. Uh, this might be, just be the beginning of some crazy season if he goes off. Uh, Castillo and White, I, they're they're in the same category of kicker. They're they're the elite part of the elite, I guess, bracket of kickers. Maybe yeah. maybe Sean Wright's fallen out of that. Or falling, I'm not sure, but I'll still keep him in the the elite kickers there. Let's talk about s- crucial questions for each team going into Week Three. Let's go from west to east, starting with the BC Lions. You got that crucial question going into Week Three for BC? Yeah, my question to them is about their D. The D so far has looked pretty good. Can they slow down this Winnipeg offense? So yes. far, I mean, so far. You know, Saskatchewan hasn't been able to. Hamilton hasn't been able to. Uh, it'll be a good test for BC. I think Winnipeg will still put up some good points against BC uh, in this one, but it'll be a tougher battle for sure. Yeah, BC's proven to be able to put a bit of pressure on the quarterback, but we'll see if they can stop a good running game. If the Bombers can get a good running game going with Augustine, who knows? 
Uh, I think that'll be a, a huge deal in the game. If Farmers can get a good running game going. That'll change everything. That means they can't drop their linebackers back and take care take care of the coverage more against yeah. a pretty lethal bomber air attack. Uh, I'll go with the Montreal Alouettes. Can the Alouettes talking about running games? Hmm. <laughs> Segway. Can the Alouettes establish the running game with Stanback? Uh, he got 88 yards from scrimmage last game, but only 42 was on the ground, and he averaged like 2.6 yards per carry. That is not usual Stanback numbers. And if they're going to be successful. Uh, especially if that Hamilton D line comes together this week, who knows? That's a question coming up. But that number uh, ha- has got to pretty much double if the Alouettes are going to find any consistencies. The offense they have to get that running game going with Steinback. Yeah, for Stand- sure. Steinback. Yeah, they they do need to get him going, and they have to take some pressure off Cody Fajardo to be that guy uh, to lead a team. Right? They need all aspects of that offense going, and the running game is going to be big. Especially he was hurt a lot last year, right? So we'll see what he can do coming back from injury. So. Totally agree. I'm going to go uh, with Winnipeg next here. Um, And it it goes into question with the same with the BC. Can the D return to the dominant D that they were in the last few years? Um, I don't know if they're going to get back to that dominant, especially with the injuries to Jeff Coat and stuff like that. And the injuries right now to the DBs back there. But they almost just need to be serviceable at this point. You know, and, and last week they gave up a lot of yards, but they didn't give up tons of points. And they shut down after that second or that third Saskatchewan touchdown. They shut things down. Two field goals only after that for the rest of the third and fourth quarters. So they don't need to be that shutdown D necessarily this year if the offense is playing as well as they are, but they need to just kind of get middle of the pack, middle form kind of thing. Yeah, they got to get a pass rush going. Yeah. Totally and, and, Vernon, rush and Vernon Adams, you Harris got away quite a bit last week, right? So yeah. you think Vernon Adams should be able to get away a lot easier than Harris did. So yeah, but the pass rush will definitely be different rather than trying to push him out of the pocket. You're going to try to keep him yeah, in, keep the pocket. Him in there. Yeah. Especially with Willie Jefferson being batting all these balls down so far in two weeks of football. I think he has like three in two weeks. Yeah. Like, and Vernon Adams is not that tall. So if you can get in his face, keep the pocket around him and collapse it yeah. uh, rather than, you know, get this crazy pressure. Maybe you don't have to blitz. You can send back kill uh, back hill, big hill, <laughs> in pressure into the coverage a bit more. I, I think they'll be okay. I'm yeah. excited to watch it now. Can't wait. Oh, for it'll tomorrow. be a fun one. Uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats, can Matthew Schlitz, 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 Schlitz continue his play from last game? Uh, he came in, he went 13 for 14 and went 118 yards and a crazy touchdown to uh, Ternowski. But you know, don't, don't get me wrong, he's not going to go on that pace again. But if he can ignite the team and get the team to rally around him, uh, Hamilton, Hamilton could catch Montreal unawares in Hamilton's home opener. We'll see. Yeah, and and you already got James Butler, who's played pretty well, right? I mean, yeah. he's he's the only bright spot so far on that Hamilton uh, offense. So uh, if he can keep it going, you just got to get a decent QB play, where especially not throwing interceptions in the end zone. So yeah. I, I think Shields can do that. So I I think he'll. I mean, uh, Montreal's got a good D. They'll be tough, especially that rush. But I think Shields can do it. Duke Williams has also been a pretty good weapon on that offense. Yeah, well. surprised he's been catching those balls. Well, was surprised he's a good receiver. He, he is, but he was kind of falling off a bit. So he is good, but he wasn't great last year. Well, where was he last year? <laughs> Just saying, Saskatchewan. Yeah, who you got next? <laughs> Speaking of, I don't know Saskatchewan. Yeah, let's go with Saskatchewan next. Uh, can Trevor Harris put up another four hundred yarder? Um, you know, going into Calgary, their defense is kind of middle of the package right now. Had some good spurts and some bad ones. Uh, I don't think he'll put up another 400. I think Calgary will give him a bit of fits, but I think he'll still have a decent day. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, I have the Toronto Argos. Will Chad Kelly take a step forward in a game that they're expected to win? Uh, And you can't overlook the Elks defense. They do have a good defense. They held BC to 22 points. Uh, You know, and they're supported by an offense that gave them zero. So if Chad Kelly can get into a groove, yeah, they'll be good. But if he can get frustrated, things don't get well, we'll see. All eyes are on Chad Kelly. You know, he's starting to kind of get a bit of star around him. So as this league starves for star quarterbacks, like we talked about last week or last episode, sorry about that. Seems so long ago, but yeah. (laughs) Can Chad Kelly take that step forward? Yeah, it'll be a good test. It's on the road, right? First home, uh, first, first road start, sorry. Um, and yeah, Edmonton D has played well or good enough kind of thing to keep Edmonton into games and give them a chance, yeah. but that offense has struggled. So it all depends. Is Toronto's D going to be ferocious and give that ball to Chad Kelly, you know, in great field position all the time? We'll see. But yeah, I think he'll take that next step and kind of 
move forward and showing that he's a starting quarterback in this league. I hope so. Yeah, the league needs it, man. The league needs it. And speaking speaking of Edmonton, you know, how long does Chris Jones have left to turn this around, especially that offense? Um, I don't know, man. I know he cleared out that whole team from last year and basically started fresh, but I think you almost got to look at this probably halfway through the season and see where he's at and see if this off. He's sticking to Cornelius. He's sticking to him. How long will he stick to him tomorrow? We'll see, but, or uh, sorry, this weekend, but we'll see, but he, you know, he's tying himself around Cornelius. So he may sink or swim with him. I I think McAdoo will leave before him. No, yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, you always blame the coordinators first, right? (laughs) Save yourself a little bit of time. Exactly. That'll, That'll give him time to finish the season. Yeah, and then they'll have to reevaluate. They'll have exactly. to reevaluate. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for me as well. We'll head to the other side of Alberta and go to Calgary. Other side, I guess the bottom side. <laughs> and Calgary uh, was last game by Jake Meyer. Was it a sign of things to come? Probably not the three hundred plus yard game again, but maybe somewhere in the middle. Uh, he looked like a decent quarterback, but again, it was only one game against an Ottawa D that wasn't great. Saskatchewan D. They got a good pass rush. They got beat up pretty bad against the Bombers, so we'll see what they can do. Yeah, he had an okay game. Okay game. <laughs> a fluke touchdown here, a la dot touchdown there. It doesn't look too spectacular. Friends, put your questions that you have for your team or other teams or anything about the CFL, like how they can't get stats right even. They can't get live stats on individual players. It's just, I can't. I can't. Never, okay. never mind about live stats. I was trying to look up stats today on CFL.ca, and there are no stats. Not yeah, no players. career stats. Nothing. No career stats. No. What is? Oh my, oh my god! Gosh, <laughs> it's like they're stuck on dial-up. These guys oh. can't figure it out. They ran out of free AOL CDs. Oh, no kidding. Man. <laughs> Let's talk about quick and dirty predictions. Uh, let's start Thursday night football. BC at Winnipeg. Who do you got? I'm going to go with the Bombers. They're at home. That offense is uh, on fire right now. I think they, they'll have the edge on BC and and the continuity, like we've talked about. A lot of the same guys back in that offense is purring, so I'm going to give the edge to the Bombers and a win. Yeah, close game, high scoring. Bombers will take it at home. BC is also on a short week and on the road, so I think that'll work against them uh, in this game. So I also got Winnipeg. Montreal, Hamilton. Who do you got in this game? I'm going to take the Thai Cats. Um, just like we said, Butler has played well. So if he can continue that, and if Schultz, you know, serviceable, no turnovers in the end zone, I still don't know what to make of Cody Fajardo there in Montreal. They weren't great in that first game against Ottawa, but they got the job done. Um, but I will give Hamilton the win this week. Yeah, Hamilton will rally around Schultz, I think, like I talked about earlier. And uh, that includes their defense. Hopefully their infighting is done. Hopefully Steinhauer got control of that because that's ridiculous. Uh, so I'm taking Hamilton to win at home in their home opener. Saskatchewan at Calgary. Uh, it's not really an upset of the week for me, but I'm going to call it an upset of the week because Saskatchewan's on the road, still missing some pieces. Uh, but I think they're going to come out of last game with a bit of confidence and they'll they'll put some points up against Calgary, uh, outpoint Calgary. And, you know, there might just be just as many green jerseys as red jerseys in the, in the stands. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I'm going to pick uh, the Riders as well, even though Dave or yeah, Dave Dickinson is six and one against his brother all time. So um, including two and oh against Saskatchewan last week. But yeah, I, I like the trajectory of Saskatchewan better than Calgary's after last week, even though Saskatchewan lost. So I'm going to go with them. And the last game of the week, Toronto at Edmonton. Who do you got? I'm going to go with Toronto. Uh, sorry, Edmonton fans, but the losing streak at home continues. Um, it's unfortunate, but I think Toronto will be too much for Edmonton. Yeah, Edmonton literally can't put points on the board. They can't. No. They're horrible. Ugh. No. Is it going to be Loxley in next, I guess, for Cornelius, not Ford? So it seems like Loxley is the uh, number two, but I don't know. you got to try something. you got to go with someone different. My gosh, it's just... <laughs> I'm I feel sorry, for Edmonton. I feel for Alex fans, man. They're just right going now. through the. Uh, I can't even swear. <laughs> Benny, do you have anything to say to our friends? Uh, you know what? Thanks a lot for listening. Don't forget subscribe, follow, and uh, have a good weekend. Yeah, smash that subscribe button, and like Lavar Burton says, we'll see you next time.
Hey, friends and neighbors, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Ray Denny Sports. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you think.